Hello, welcome back to Extra Class on Sports tonight. The final score then, Vitsev Wuj 1, Gornik Zabsha 1. Both sides maintain their unbeaten run. Vitsev Wuj dropped points for the first time this season. But, Robert Bojciak, I put it to you that we have seen that they are perhaps genuine contenders at the top of the table, not just recipients of a fortunate uh, fixture list. I mean, that's true. Uh, it was exciting to watch them in the second half when they were put under the pressure and the test by going behind uh, to Gurnik. And I think they stepped up to the challenge. Um, even when they equalised, they really wanted to go for it and win it. I mean, eventually both teams, they decided, just, let's go for it. And the 90th minute was so exciting because both teams, it was box-to-box -box action, you know? And Radislav Morshkovsky used to be the youth team manager of Vitsev Wuj. He's now presiding over the senior team, but introducing a lot of these youngsters. And the younger they got, the better they seem to get second that's, half. That's correct. I mean, both Stempinski and Rybicki, that both came of the of the bench, they were really impressive. I mean, Rybicki, the player we highlighted before the match, could be now remembered for that Neymar haircut, you know, in a way. <laughs> uh, but it was actually Stempinski who scored the, the equaliser, which we believe is a very good movement in the box. First goal in his uh, professional career. Do you reckon uh, Mirishkovsky and, and the Vitsev players will be unhappy about the way they've finish this game because of the, the goal as well. Question marks over handball mm -hmm. for, for the visitors going exactly well, first it, half. It opener. was great, first of all, to see the players literally just collapse on the pitch once the referee blew the final whistle because it shows the commitment and that they actually wanted something more from that. So even though I might have said before the match that both teams would be quite happy with a scoring draw, it seems that both sides were actually wanted three points from that. Yeah, what about Gornik Zabshin now? Because what thing we've learned from them is that you definitely back them if you're having a bet to draw a game. Drawn four from five since the opening night victory away at PS Klavice. What is it about them that results in draws all the time? You know, it's I think it may be that delivery to between the, the balance between the defence and an offence. I mean, uh, for me, they lack someone in the midfield who can actually connect both both lines and, and create some chances because as we were talking, Nakulma probably could have served. Um, uh, yeah, he was the top scorer last season, not scoring, is he? He missed a couple of chances in the second exactly. half. Well, let's look at how they started and how they took the lead then, Gornik Zabcha. And uh, Robert wasn't sure why Arkadiusz Mulik, their main striker, was taking the corner kick, but to some effect, it led straight to the goal. It, it did work out, even though I feel a bit bitter about that handball, armball. Well, you know? I mean, it, for me, it does look like a deliberate. Uh, body movement because he's twisted his body into it. It seems like you think there's an intent there. To but maybe perhaps he was pushed by one of the defenders who were who were mark who was marking him. So never knows. Nevertheless, it it was a it was a decent cross from Milik. Alexander Shevelukin. Yeah, quite nice for Milik that side from it. But you, can you blame him or just a service to him? Um, no, I mean no, it's, it's it's difficult to say. I mean, I think he still has some areas to improve, and he's not a completed footballer yet. Thanks God, he's only 18. Um, I mean, I think he's doing quite well for his age. Well, the 18-year-old set up the first goal for a 30-year-old Ukrainian defender and a 17-year-old in the second half, equalising for Vidsev Wuj. And what great movement in the box, but should you really be side-footing a finish from six yards out? Is it, were there question marks about Zabsha's defending okay. from, from another corner? Look, the way how you qu ask the question, you probably the answer is no, you shouldn't. Nevertheless, the way how they execute the corner with that clever move, pass... Well, we can just, look at it. We can look at the short, the short sort of corner routine that led to that you know, equaliser. That's, that's, that's something, you know, I think it, it, it affected that in the first place. And then secondly, look at his movement. He's really fast, you know. He started pretty much from the edge of the box. And then, you know, he sprints towards the, the middle of the pitch. So, I mean, some credit should be given for the young striker for his movement. 17 years of age, how bright a future. That's right. You know, so many of the guys would not put the feet right and they would probably smash the ball over the top you know, of the bar. So, for him, the way to execute the ball, it's something, you know, some credit should be given. And maybe, you know, we have just seen a great career to Yeah, emerge. only just 17 in May as well. Um, so the penalty shout from the first half as well. Vitsev Wuj may feel slightly aggrieved about that on, on Brosh. We keep seeing it. We know that Mike McKenna, our big match commentator, is very confident that no. it should have been a penalty. The referee bizarrely gave a corner kick at the time. Yeah, which was uh, either or. I mean, that's, the corner was not an option. Nevertheless, I think, you know, the fact that we're still debating that uh, well, speaks... You, know, you can't blame the ref too much a sense for not giving a penalty if we are debating it. But there's a question mark over... Oh, I mean, Gincharchik, whether, whether there's contact from Gincharchik. We, we do wish we have a camera from behind the goal, or from behind the players, just to see the trajectory of how he ran, uh, whether it, it was affected. I mean, if, if the referee probably called a penalty, we would be arguing all the way around. So uh, I can understand both perspectives. To see if he really, yeah, to see if he really cut across him, I suppose. Well, the, the upshot of all this is that Vitsev Wuj, one point clear at the top of the night, go two points clear 
reflecting on the top of the table, unbeaten, and five can, games in. Look, and, and they can go five points uh, top if they if they beat Polonia on, on, Friday. on Friday. So again, you know, for for the team of for the for the team they have and the predictions before the season, they do remarkably great, and you know they can save be safe from relegation. So early so in the think, season, do you, you know? think Legia Warsaw and Lech Poznan will start to think and, and start to see Vitsev as a genuine contender, genuine look, rival? Look at Śląsk Wrocław. It's a it's a tricky it's a tricky team because we were you know bashing them from from, from the beginning of the season. <laughs> Last year's champions in fourth, yeah. But they have ten points, playing absolutely uh, woeful football, something that we're not really happy with, and they still managed to get ten points. So what happens if they start playing? Some proper football, as they did last time, this te this this uh, this time last year. Bizarrely, this must be a shot in the arm confidence for Vidsev Wuj, wouldn't it? Do you think? Of course. I mean, for for them to still be up there with the way how they play, because you know the result is one thing, but secondly, they do beat their opposition. They do play better. I mean, even tonight. They, they felt like they want to win the match, so it's, it was not a surprise to see them play that way. Yeah, Slant's coming from behind to beat uh, GKS Bohatov yesterday. I suppose you can't read too much into that because we know that Bohatov, well, it's only their second goal of the season, so they're not necessarily they're so, I mean, Bohatov, the table. You know, they, 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 they did play quite well against uh, Lech Poznan, yeah. so it's, you know, they may be rock bottom, but it's not a bad team. And Piers Klevich, we weren't sure we were going to see them. We watched them on the opening night lose to Gornik Zabsha at home, and they've won three on the spin, and now they're up to, to fifth place. What a crazy league, actually. Please, don't, don't ask me for that logic behind that because I find none. Certainly so. So um, where would your money be though from what you've seen from the title so from far? From what I've seen? Because um, they, they're going to get better aren't they presumably because you've got Stefinski and Well and that's the question whether they will get better or the, the, the players will not be able to cope with that excitement and maybe they will you know maybe the other teams will be prepared to see what Vizev is play, uh, playing. So that's the question for me. I know it's a tricky one, but I just thought that Shlonsk, I mean, with playing so badly and getting yeah. 10 points, what happens if they play well? Well, like Vizev Wuj, reading about their fans, they said that their, their aim was just to try and stay up and some of them predicted they'd be with their with their fellow townsman LKS Wuj in the, in the second the, tier of yeah. Poland. That's what they thought. But they're not, they're up there. And the best reality is we look at the bottom of the table is that Vizev Wuj, at the very least, are almost safe from relegation because 24 points was a cut-off last season and this season again teams like Zagwembi, Lubin and, and GKS Bohatov just struggling to get on the on the point uh, scoreboard. I mean for Bohatov as it stands it looks like a mission impossible to stay up, up there in the division. Never, I mean we'll see we'll see what will happen with the, with the coach. From, two teams get relegated don't they just to reiterate. To, two, to two teams are relegated. Zagwembi they started with minus three because of some previous uh, punishment for some match fixing and then put Biskidje a decent side but they don't get the results uh, don't get they, goals do they really they, they don't get the goals exactly so there's only Damien that he scores for them so some questions to be asked and Ruhoju finally improving <laughs> after that dreadful beginning to the season yeah both Rook and Corona instantly got the first goals and first points against each other last week and then they've both won this weekend so it just it's, you know that psychology you know once they get points on the board maybe they can get more and more of that and maybe they can actually perform more so we'll see you know it's, it's, it's extra class huh? Expect <laughs> unexpectable. Well, that's what people make of it. It makes Twitter very interesting, doesn't it? The commentaries on this game. It finished one all then. Uh, what did people make of it, Agatha Lee? What did you make of it? Are you happy with the point? You're, of course, a, a Zabsha fan. No, well, I'm, I'm just a little bit disappointed. And I've been actually criticised for changing my mind and changing my <laughs> predictions. Uh, my original prediction was 1-1. One, one, and then I thought, after t talking to Arik, hey. that they're in such a great shape that I'm going to go for 2-1. And that's going to be I finally... Never, I never heard this 1-1 one, one prediction, did you, huh. Robert? I can't I remember. Don't, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember this one, to be honest. No, no, no. Just go back on Twitter and check. Oh, okay. like, right, between, right. Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, okay well, it didn't We believe happen. you. Millions wouldn't. It didn't happen. So uh, anyway, I'm just a little bit disappointed. I thought that they could, you know, that they were in a quite good shape. Uh, but I think Vida played really, really well tonight. So, you know, that's all you can ask for, really. And um, in terms of Twitter, uh, we had literally 50-50 uh, people who support Vida really thought that Vida should score another goal. And that's the same for Gurnik. So um, Martin Walstrik said, I'm watching and I told you before the game, that the game, the game against Legia, that uh, Gurnik can have a great season. And I totally agree. So I just hope they'll be in a better shape next time. But um, 
what did you make of it? Did you enjoy the game? I think we loved it, yeah. It's interesting fans are very confident about Gornick Zabshire, Robert. Um, well, I think not but undefeated, they just need to turn those draws into, Look, into I, wins. Incredible, four <laughs> draws from five However, games. However, I do fancy Gornick breaking the records in terms of how many draws a season can you get. You know, <laughs> yeah. if they can get far out of five, perhaps they can get, I don't know, 20. You know, they should save them from relegation and they break some Guinness records. So that would be exciting to watch as well, in a way. Yeah, maybe your mate Milik needs a little bit of help there, Agatha, as well, don't you? He seems to be doing a lot of work on his own for an 18-year-old as well. Yes, well, he's got a great talent and great potential. I don't really think that he has that much to do today. So, uh, uh, yeah, and Novak also. I think he can be um, the next Milik if he works really, really hard. He's also very talented. And, uh, yeah, I think, as you mentioned... As, sorry to interrupt you. As you mentioned, he's only 18. He's still learning. He's not, you know... Um, are ready for Manchester City, so let's huh. just give him a break. <laughs> cool. No, I'm mapping his career. Agatha, great to speak to you. Look forward to seeing you on uh, Friday as well. Agatha Lee there, fantastic stuff. And interesting with, with Arka Dushmalik, because he's only 18, so we maybe expect big things from him, but he's not getting much help from his strike partner, Prejudice Nicolma, who threatened to get off the mark today, last season's top scorer, but did, you know, a couple of misses. Well, but that's what I could imagine, that if they, the, the, well, Nakuma gets some goals, the confidence will grow, maybe he'll be able to, to challenge more one-on-one, -on -one because this is not something that we see that often in extra class. We don't see that many one-on-one -on -one challenges from the strikers, and which is a pity in a way, and Nakuma was famous for being clever and you know, uh, skillful enough to do so. So I think it's all about the confidence, and once it works, you know, he'll be able to provide some amazing passes to Milik. Style of play from both teams, particularly Vidsev Wu, struck me as being very English in sort of uh, the way they approach the game. Particularly, you know, Wuj, get it wide, whip crosses in all the time, wasn't it? It was continual stream and, and both goals again tonight coming from crosses. Well, that's true. This is, but this is something of a published football as well. We have seen so many headers or, or, or volleys throughout the, the season so far. But for Vidsev, I think they went back to the basics saying, OK, just let's, let's get the basics right. This is like working with the academy. I don't want to, you know, again, talk about this Mrochkovsky babes as we talk about the Busby babes but yeah. in a way these young players they do that basic you know um, the rule book of, of, of football and they just you know emerge slowly by slowly so you know if this is going to help why not makes for entertaining games we've had three one or draws but they've all been fantastic uh, this weekend live on sports let's speak now to a Polish football <laughs> legend I suppose he's also an English football legend and a Scottish, indeed, a Scottish, Scottish football legend. Certainly. He's played for Celtic, he's played for Reading, he's played for Polonia Warszawa, he's managed them to the title, he's played for Legia Warszawa, managed them, he's managed Vitsev Wuj, he's done just about everything. I'm very pleased to say we can uh, speak to Dariusz Wadowczyk now, and I hope the pronunciation is right. Dariusz, very good to speak to you tonight, sir. And I understand congratulations you're offering. Your tomorrow 50th birthday. Congratulations, sir. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Are you well? Did you get a chance to see Vidsev Wuj tonight continue their unbeaten start to the season? Well, you know, uh, I think the game uh, was the result was fair for you know for both teams. I think the, uh, uh, Vidsev and Gurnik didn't create many chances, good chances. They play and keep the ball uh, to the 40 yards away from the goal, and you know, yeah. they didn't penetrate enough penalty balls to, to score the goal from the action. Uh, as you've seen, that, uh, they scored uh, from the set paces, both teams. And uh, I think that was a hectic game in a good pace. But, you know, that was, that was a, very, a, a lot of mistakes from both sides. And uh, obviously there was a lot of, lot of fight uh, from, from both sides. But, you know, uh, for me, that, that, that was a good game. Yeah, well, fair enough. There was a lot of time, but, 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 you know, that wasn't a good game. Talking about the pace, do you think that Vizev can maintain that pace towards the, the title at some stage? Well, anything can happen, you know. In Polish League at the moment, I, I don't think it, it's uh, a lot about quality. Obviously, we have some good players, you know, uh, in, some, in some teams. But uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think... So. That, that there is a, you know a lot of quality in in, uh, in the games. Obviously, some teams play play better football, uh, but I don't think that that exactly is Vizer uh, Luch, which is at the moment the leader of of uh, Polish league. Uh, but I don't think that that's gonna stand you know forever. Is Obviously, they they have a very good start, but but I don't think you know they they will keep that uh, till the end of the season. 
How excited by the, the youth there for Vidsev, though? A 17-year-old scoring today, Stefinski. Is, is, that bright for the, is that good for the future of, of Polish football, the kind of the plan that's been Sorry, implemented? Can you, say, can, you, can you say again? I, I can hardly hear you. Yeah, I was just saying how, how important and how good for, for Vidsev Wuj, 17-year-old scoring today, and lots of youngsters seemingly being introduced to the team. How important for the, the future of the club and, and Polish football? Exactly. You know, a lot of young players become uh, um, main persons in, this, in in some teams. Uh, I think you know, if if the boy, which is as you said, 17 year old, uh, scored the goal, it is good for him, and obviously, uh, it's good for the future. For the you know, if he will stay in the business, and probably they will have a uh, good player in the future. In, in but, our you know, club, with, with the young players, it's always, always, you, you have to take time. Yes. But talking about taking time, you see, in our coverage of Extra Klasa, we talk a lot about Milik and him being ready to play for the first national team of Poland. What's your opinion? Do you think that Milik is ready to play for Poland? I don't think so. I'm not really a fan of, you know, uh, taking a player who play one or two games, or which have a one or two good games in the Polish league uh, and uh, you can hear the voices that some, some people will say that, you know, take him to the national team. But I, I think it's, it's, it's too early. He, he, he just began to play in the, in the you know, Polish, Polish extra class and, you know, I, I think he's supposed to show what he's able, you know, for, what he's able uh, to do on the pitch, sure. And uh, obviously, you know, he 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 he's supposed to get some experience. Well, Darius, and, uh, sorry, he can play. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, sir. We've uh, run out of time, unfortunately, Darius. But fantastic to speak to you tonight. Enjoy your 50th birthday celebrations, and of course, Polonia against Bitsev Wuj on Friday. Yeah, that's supposed to be a good game. Great. We we'll hope to catch up with you soon, Darius Budowczyk, a, a Polish. Thank English you very much. Yes. And a Scottish football legend there. Well, coming up after the break, we'll reflect more on the weekend that's been and look forward to the live games coming up this weekend on Sports Tonight from Extra Classer.